Welcome to Madison Public Library in Madison, Ohio's Theater of the Mind, Shakespeare Edition. Today, we begin with Act 3, Scene 1 of William Shakespeare's famous tragedy, Macbeth. To hear more of Macbeth, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In this first scene of Act 3, King Duncan is dead and buried, and Macbeth is now King of Scotland. But there is unease around Macbeth's new castle and forest. Banquo is played by Sue V. Macbeth is played by Joe P. Margaret B. is the attendant. Debbie S. and Vivian V. are the first and second murders, respectively. Thou hast it now, King Cawdor, glem us all. As the weird woman promised, and I fear, thou place most foully fort, yet is said it should not stand in thy prosperity, that myself should be the root and father of many kings, if there come truth from them. As upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine, why buy the verities on thee made good? May they not be my oracles as well, and set me up in hope? But hush, no more. Here's our chief guest. If he had been forgotten, it had been as a gap in our great feast, and all thing unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me, to which my duties are with the most inducible tie forever knit. Right you this afternoon? Aye, my good lord. We should have else desired your good advice, which still hath been both grave and prosperous in this day's council. But we'll take tomorrow. It's far you ride? As far, my lord, as I will fill up the time, twixt this and supper. Go not my horse the better. I must become a borrower of the night for a dark hour or twain. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins have bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing their cruel parricide, filling their hearers with strange invention. But of that tomorrow, when, therewithal, we shall have cause of state craving us jointly. Hie you to horse. Adieu. Till you return at night. Goes Fleance with you? Ay, my good lord. Our time does call upon. I wish your horses swift and sure of foot, and so do I commend you to their backs. Farewell. Let every man be master of his time, till seven at night. To make society the sweeter welcome, we will keep ourselves till supper time alone. Well then, God be with you. Sirrah, a word with you. Attend those men our pleasure? They are, my lord, without the palace gate. Bring them before us. To be thus is nothing. But to the safety thus. Our fears in Banquo stick deep. And in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. Tis much he dares. And to the dauntless temper of his mind, he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear. And under him, my genius is rebuked. As it is said, Mark Antony's was by Caesar. He chide the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me, and bade them speak to him. Then prophet-like, they held him father to a line of kings. Upon my head, they placed a fruitless crown, and put a barren scepter in my grip. Thence, to be wrenched from an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan have I murdered, put rancors in the vessel of my peace only for them, and mine internal jewel given to the common enemy of man to make them kings, the seed of Banquo's kings. Rather than so, come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance. 
Who's there? Now go to the door and stay there until we call. Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please your highness. Well then, now have you considered of my speeches? No, that it was he in the times past which held you so under fortune, which you thought had been our innocent self. This I made good to you in our last conference. Passed in probation with you. How you were born in hand, how crossed the instruments. Who wrought with them, and all things else that might to half a soul, and to a notion craze say, thus did Banquo. You made it known to us. I did so, and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Do you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? Are you so gospeled to pray for this good man and for his issue, whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and buried yours forever? We are men, my liege. Aye. In the catalog ye go for men, as hounds and greyhounds, mongrels, spaniels, curs, shuffs, water rugs, and demi wolves are clept all by the name of dogs. The valued file distinguishes the swift, the slow, the subtle, the housekeeper, the hunter, every one according to the gift which bounteous nature hath in him closed, whereby he does receive particular addition from the bill that writes them all alike, and so of men. Now, if you have a station in the file, now at the worst rank of manhood, say it, and I will put that business in your bosoms, whose execution takes your enemy off, grapples you to the heart and love of us, who wear our health but sickly in his life, which in his death were perfect. I am one, my liege. When the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless with what I do despite the world. And I another, though weary with disasters, tugged with fortune, that I would set my lie on any chance to mend it or be rid on. Both of you know Banquo was your enemy. True, True my lord. So is he mine. And in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrust against my nearest of life. And though I could with barefaced power sweep him from my sight and bid my will vouch it, yet I must not, for certain friends that are both his and mine, whose love I may not drop, but wail his fall, who I myself struck down. And thence it is, that I, to your assistance, do make love, masking the business from the common eye for sundry weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us, though our lives- Your spirit shines through you. Within this hour, at most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves, acquaint you with the perfect spy of the time, the moment on it, for it must be done tonight, and something from the palace, always thought that I require a clearness, and with him, to leave no rubs nor botches in the work, Fleance, his son, that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's, must embrace the fates of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. I'll come to you anon. We are resolved, my lord. I'll call upon you straight. Abide within. It is concluded. Banquo, thy soul's flight. If it find heaven, 
must find it out tonight. And this was Act 3, Scene 1 of Macbeth. Thank you to Sue, Joe, Margaret, Debbie, and Vivian. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for the next scene of Macbeth. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. <laughs>